All right, y'all, I want y'all to pay close attention to this video. This is a teaching moment, all right? And, and I'm gonna prove a point to you guys because I've, you know, I've been on YouTube for about four years with my um, my main channel, GMOG Media TV, and I, what I always like to do, I'm a researcher. I like to get to the root of the problem. I'm not a surface thinker. I get to the root of the problem, you know what I'm saying? And I try to correlate the root of the problem and give you guys a synopsis of my findings based off observation. And so this is what I'm doing right now. So I'm gonna break down, family, why battle leagues like HBO Blaze Battle and Eminem's Total Slaughter, two big platforms at the time, backed by corporate dollars, why they failed all right and 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 not only not only why they failed but battle rap as niche as it is right now the point is is that battle rap it cannot be backed by a machine it cannot be backed by corporate dollars it's not meant to be commercialized but i want to break this down in terms of why hbo's blaze battle and i'm gonna give you guys a little history of both as well um HBO Blaze Battle and and Eminem Total Slaughter. Okay, so let let's break let's break down let's break this down. Let's let's start with Eminem's. Um, actually, no, let's start with HBO's Blaze Battle because we're going to go in chronological order. <clears throat> so you may or may not know. All right, uh, HBO Blaze Battle. Um, this was this was basically. A contest of 16 MCs okay now these 16 MCs were chosen um, you know to various means at the time and the particulars and the particulars of that um, of blaze battle was um, the actual backers of that were was Vi magazine who created a spinoff of their magazine called Blaze. And as you can see right here on the screen, this guy right here, Jesse Washington, was the editor or managing editor of Vibe Magazine, okay? And then Vibe decided to make a hip hop based spinoff of Vibe Magazine called Blaze Magazine. And Jesse, um, Jesse Washington, was the founder editor-in-chief of blaze magazine okay so this is the history of, of blaze magazine they had the infamous covers that you guys may have um, known about like if you go on uh, jesse's instagram page this is one of the popular covers back in the day i remember this stuff um some of you some of you guys may have, may be too young for this but i remember all these covers back in the day from blaze magazine but these are the guys responsible for um, funding the Blaze MC battle that Vibe Magazine happened to partner up with HBO to do this 16 MC freestyle battle contest at the time, okay? Now, the Blaze battles, like I said, it was 16 MCs at the time and um, there was pretty much the format of that particular battle. And this predates Smack. This predates Fight Club. This predates all of the battle leagues that you see today. The format of Blaze Battle was each MC has one minute, one minute rounds to spit over a beat, to rap over a beat. So that's basically what they call the antiquated format of battle rap because right now modern day battle rap they don't do that they don't you know rap over beats anymore unlike um now they're trying to bring it back with verbal war zone where they're rapping over beats where they having uh cordless mics or headsets and they rap over beats right but the mainstream or the the um i guess you could say the the norm 
of modern day battle rap today is acapella. Acapella versus without a beat. All right. But HBO Blaze Battle, you had um, a, a tune of 16 MCs, okay, and they were rap over over a beat in a three round, one minute um, format. Blaze Battle was hosted by KRS One, Dougie Fresh, at the time, as well as uh, yeah DJ like Tony Touch on the ones and twos and things of that nature, okay. Um, HBO Blaze Battle at the time was meant to be, and this is this was you know they were pretty much ahead of their time to be honest with you because this also predates contests like American Idol, The Voice, Amer America's Got Talent, right? It that particular format for that show, it actually was the predecessor or the progenitor of the shows that you see today like again American Idol The Voice all of those shows like that but it was this was basically basically strictly for hip hop artists MCs okay the problem with HBO Blaze Battle was the format what i mean by that was the show was recorded but it was heavily edited um, you can read online in, in, in certain blog posts and stuff like that about HBO's Blaze Battle. There was a lot of fights going on during recordings, a lot of mishaps. Um, a lot of the times the, the, the MCs will have to redo their verses, you know what I'm saying, or do so many takes to make sure that the recording meshed well during the editing process. But again, the the... the it didn't feel organic because it was so heavily edited. Um, and you could tell, you know, with uh, KRS one as the MC and it would have, they would do so many cuts in between segments and stuff like that. Um, you know, it, it, it was actually pretty, you know, it was actually from an editing standpoint, pretty bad to watch. Um, but overall, you know, you look back on it, HBO Blaze Battle was a pretty much a trendsetter in terms of how you view um, shows with the contest format or like a talent show format. And it's based off the HBO Blaze Battle, you know, that format. Um, the battles weren't necessarily judged. Uh, you, you had crowd participation based off crowd reaction. That's how they would view you know, um, that, that's how they would pick the winners, right? But overall, like I said, you know, HBO Blaze Battle, they had a, they had a uh, very antiquated format um, and it was heavily butchered and edited. And um, because Battle Rap just needs to be in its pure, raw essence, meaning that unedited, basically, especially when guys are, are, are spinning their rounds, um, you know, it doesn't come off organic. And that's pretty much why it failed. And that's also pretty much why, um, what was I gonna say? That's pretty much why that, as I said before, my opening monologue, you can commercialize battle rap. It's not meant to be commercialized. It's not meant to be backed by uh, corporate backers, corporate entities. You know, it's meant to be in this pure, raw essence. You know, from the streets. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's that's how that's what it's meant to be, right? So, like I said, HBO Blaze Battle. Uh, you had the winner from um, HBO Blaze Battle back in 2000. Idea, he won the he won the whole contest. Rest in peace to him. Um, and he, uh, he, he, you know, he was the winner, you know. I believe he beat, uh, who did he beat? In the, who did he beat in, in the final round? I think it was uh, 
E Dub or one of those guys. I gotta pull up the video. But um and I forgot you had Riza. Riza battled uh Lord Ikeem. I'm looking at the old footage now. Uh I remember that battle too. Uh but yeah, you know. Blaze, oh yeah, I forgot J, J Ru the damage of battle too. Damn, I forgot about that. I forgot about that. Yep. I remember Breeze ever flowing. I remember him. He was pretty good. He was pretty dope. But I also want to point out this, right? Idea was the winner, but you had also you had other winners as well in the in the context. Even the guys who lost, the main goal of battle rap and how it's supposed to be is supposed to be a stepping stone to get to the next level as a signed artist, sign established artist, establish your fan base. Start making albums, mixtapes, and touring and making successful money, lucrative money. And that's what these guys did. Rest in peace to Idea. He was able to do that. He signed a, a record deal, able to put out albums, material, tour. Um, you had other guys as well who, who uh, were contestants of Blaze Battle that also signed record deals. Um, and things of that nature. Um, from from HBO Blaze Battle, you know, and they also try to make it. They also try to do a part two. They try to do a continuation of Blaze Battle, but it went defunct. They didn't have enough. You know, they try to get contestants for, but the return of HBO Blaze Battle. They try to make it a a return back in two thousand and two. Right, so two years later, they try to they try to return it, and slated for August of two thousand and uh, August of two thousand and two, they were looking for talent, and they couldn't find talent, they couldn't find the resources, and enough money to continue on with HBO Blaze Battle or the Blaze Battle series, which they try to make a competitive um, sport in battle rap all right so you know again overall man hbo blaze battle predates smacked predates fight club it predates all the major battle leagues or independent battle leagues you see today you know but you know that old format of rapping over beats um was shape-shifted and again i gotta bring up cassidy was shape was shape shifted when Cassidy battled Freeway in Rockefeller Studio, the acapella freestyle battle. That's what sparked the format of battle rap today. So that brings me to a segue of Eminem's Total Slaughter. So Eminem, who also came from the battle rap culture, he battled in Scribble Jam. Um, he battled guys like MC Juice. MC Juice battled guys like Supernatural. You know, he did freestyles on Sway, Sway in Tech, uh, the Wake Up Show back in the day. Look up the Wake Up Show. You know, great, great freestyles on on the Wake Up Show with Sway in Tech. So he came from that. He came from that elk. So he knew and understand the battle rap culture, right? Eminem did. So he decided to invest. Him and Paul Rosenberg decided to invest money, lots of money into creating their own battle rap league called Total Slaughter. All right, so this was in 2014, all right? Um, they try to commercialize it. They try to make it, you know, they try to commercialize it as much as possible. They, they had a, a series. They came on TV, um, on Fuse, the Fuse Network, a four episode, um, series called Road to Total Slaughter that would record the MCs that were that were trying to actually gain their spot in the Total Slaughter roster. Right? Um so you had MCs like, you know, Joe Button, Hollow the Don who who were the headliners of the uh, Total Slaughter card. 
you had um, guys like Murder Mook versus Loaded Lux. You had guys like uh, T-Rex versus, I uh, believe it was T-Rex versus, um, who was it? T-Rex, uh, let me see who, who was it. I know T-Rex battled. I think it was Big T. It might have been Big T or, or somebody else. I'm getting their names mixed up, right? But you had like, I think, I think you had a total of about five. I don't have the card in front of me. I thought I had it here somewhere. Um, but you had a total of about five um, battles on that card, right? And... Um, See, hold on. Yeah, T Rex versus Daylight. So you had T Rex versus Daylight, and you had, I believe, um, you had another card, another battle before T Rex versus Daylight. I believe it was Big T versus somebody else. But anyway, um. Like I said, Eminem, Paul Rosenberg invested a lot of money with creating the Total Slaughter League, doing these uh, episodes on TV, and actually promoting um, the battle on pay-per-view, trying to make it on pay-per-view. The headliner was Joe Button, an industry rapper, versus um, Hollow the Don, a well-known indie battle rapper and now i know why you know well you you, well, you can you kind of understand why you know joe button decided to quit rapping period and go into his calling which is commentary hip-hop commentary which is what he does on his podcast and he's extremely successful so kudos to him right um but i would say one of the reasons why he decided to quit hip-hop especially from his lane of what he was doing. Um, and he, you know, he's a battle rapper himself is the fact that if, again, battle rap is a very niche sport. It's not a lucrative sport, which is why Eminem, Paul Rosenberg invested so much money, but they lost. They did not, they did not get a return on their investment, investing in total slaughter. They didn't release the pay-per-view figures <laughs> for that for that event back in uh, 2014, okay? Um, they booked the venue, the Hammerstein Ballroom, which holds a capacity of 2,500 uh, people. And 95% of the people in that venue were not Battle Rap fans. They were Eminem fans, Slaughterhouse fans, right? They, had, they knew nothing about guys like Loaded Lux, guys like Howl of the Dawn, Guys like Murder Mook, they knew nothing about these guys. They was just there thinking that they were going to see Eminem perform because Eminem name was was attached to the Total Slaughter. That's what they that's what they thought, right? And they thought wrong. Um, they tried to bridge the gap. They tried to bridge the gap uh, between hip hop, battle rap right into mainstream hip hop with the with the total slaughter and again you can't do that one these are two different entities that cannot be this, being the same battle rap needs to be organic it needs to be raw uncut unfiltered and it cannot be backed by corporate dollars it can't and that's a conundrum too because you want the sport to expand but, and this is the key word here, battle rap needs to expand, right? It needs to gain a bigger fan base. But the key word here is that it can't be a lucrative sport because you cannot project the fan base. The fan base cannot be projected because it's such a niche sport. It's such a niche market, you know? 
it's it, you know a mainstream hip hop artists like Drake or uh, Travis Scott millions of fans right you can easily project what they're going to do in the next album you can project that easily you can't do that with battle rap because it's such a niche sport it's hard to predict basically it all depends on who you have on there on your card right and, it, and this leads back to what I said before this leads back to Cassidy you know in, in order for you to understand um how to be successful in battle rap making the most money generating the most money for these leagues and for yourself making the battle rap culture relevant again right you got to understand how that's being done because the majority of these battle rappers aren't making no damn money you can't call yourself a professional battle rapper it doesn't exist you, you can't because you're not making that kind of money but they're trying to make a career out of being a professional battle rapper. And that's what Total Slaughter tried to do. Right? Watch this video. Well, watch this clip. And and it, it explains what they were trying to do, but it failed. This summer, witness the birth of the next great American sports league. This is Total Slaughter 1. Okay. See what they said, right? Witness the birth of the next American great sports league. Total Slaughter 1. So they were looking to continue this. Total Slaughter 2, Total Slaughter 3, just like HBO Blaze Battle. Can you imagine if HBO Blaze Battle, right, kept continuing like they did American Idol for like, what, 10, 15 seasons? Can you imagine if they had like 20 seasons of Blaze Battle and it was so mainstream that you can stream it on platforms like iTunes and Tidal and Spotify? You know what I'm saying? Can you imagine that? It would change everything. You, you, if that happened, you you would see no Smack URL. You would see no King of the Dot. You would see no RBE. You wouldn't see none of these leagues today. If HBO Blaze Battle was successful and had the right format, all these other leagues would not exist. But it failed. Because, again, there's no lucrative money in battle rap. If you follow the blueprint of how to be successful, you learn from guys who did it, like Cassidy, who did it successful the most. But guys don't want to humble themselves. Guys don't want to be able to sharpen their tool. Or maybe they're just not talented enough to actually produce good music where they can be successful, get, you know, have have good music, mixtapes, albums, being able to tour, make good money. And then come back to the sport of battle rap and just show, you know, that you still are in the culture and it's still you're still tuned in to the culture. And that's what Cassidy's doing. Guys that are just aren't, aren't talented, are talented enough to do that. That's why they're content with making crumbs and in battle rap and accepting whatever there's given to them in battle rap. Not, not understanding, like I said before in my last video, not understanding the business acumen of battle rap, how to market yourself and promote yourself, how to make sure you negotiate percentage splits of pay-per-view sales if you have that kind of cachet and marquee value, being able to discuss and negotiate ticket sales for live gates and copywriting your material and negotiating how much money you're making off of YouTube views, AdSense revenue. Right, you just if you're just content in taking money up front, or taking half your money based off the contract you sign, and another half during the battle or after the battle, you know you're just not, you're just not, uh, you just don't understand business and how it works. You know what I'm saying? Battle rap is a very niche sport, like I said before. It's a conundrum. You don't you want you want to expand and make it bigger, but at the same time. Battle rap is not meant to be commercialized or backed by corporate dollars, like I said before. It's just not. And you saw it fail with HBO Blaze Battle, funded by HBO and Vibe Magazine, and you saw it fail with Eminem and Paul Rosenberg. Right? And Interscope, the guys who funded the guys who funded uh Total Slaughter. You can't commercialize battle rap. Point blank and simple. You can't. It doesn't work doesn't work 
So, so yeah, fam, those are my thoughts about um why HBO Blaze Battle and Eminem's Total Slaughter failed. Just like I mentioned to you before, it's not battle rap is not meant to be commercialized. It's not meant to be backed by corporate dollars. It's meant to be raw in its purest form. Raw and uncut. You know what I'm saying? Learn these battle rappers need to learn. And this is things that people don't talk about. You know. I haven't seen this topic on nobody else's channel on YouTube at all. But people don't talk about the business aspect of battle rap. They don't. When when it comes to boxing, and boxing is my favorite sport, and I follow the sport very closely. So we we can have conversations about the fight, negotiations of the fight, purse splits, ticket sales, all of that, right? You can talk about that in boxing, but you don't hear about that enough in um in battle rap. Like there's an NDA in terms of what kind of contract these battle leagues are making these battle rappers sign. We don't know. We can only speculate how much these guys are getting paid. Um, what are the contract stipulations and stuff like that, right? Uh, we can only speculate. They don't release those numbers because it's just they, they just have a contract like that, an NDA, if, if you will, for that. But there's just not enough talk about the business aspect of battle rap. And the people need to be educated on how that works. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah, those are my quick thoughts about... Well, not quick thoughts, but those are my thoughts about um, HBO Blaze Battle and Eminem Total Slaughter and why they failed. And why Battle Rap is a niche sport and um, how it can't be commercialized. It's got to be pure and uncut, bottom line. All right, fellas, so leave your comments down below. Let me know what you guys think, family. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at GMOG Media TV. Till next time, Chauncey signing out. Peace.